Welcome to our presentation of Family Systems Therapy by Angela Abrams and Stacy Willison, San Diego State University, ARP 660, Theory and Practice of Counseling. Family Systems Therapy. In our presentation, we will discuss what the family systems model is, how it developed, who the key theorists were, how it can be applied to vocational rehabilitation counseling, and how to construct a genogram. At the end, we will have an activity via a link to SurveyMonkey. What is the family systems model? What is the family systems model? Well, first, let us talk about the family unit. The family unit is our first experience with other people. It is our first society where we learn about social norms, work together to ensure needs are met, and experience love, intimacy, connectedness, and belonging as we operate as part of a unit. Approach to the family systems model. Although Murray Bowen is considered to be one of the pioneers of family systems therapy, Alfred Adler and Rudolf Gregers were the first practitioners of family therapy. Alfred Adler believed that people could be best understood through the context of the relationships. He was the pioneer of open forum family counseling. The family systems model takes the approach that, number one, people make up families and families are living systems. Number two, families are complex and you cannot truly understand a person unless you consider them in the context of that larger system. Three, problems, behaviors may be a symptom of family dysfunction, assuming the problematic behavior serves a function for the family. The behavior is maintained by family processes and highlights their inability to operate in a productive manner. The problematic behavior may have been learned from previous generations and passed down from each generation. Four, behavior is best changed by working with and considering the family unit, since the actions of one family member affects the others in the family. So let's take a look at Murray Bowen, who is a pioneer in family systems therapy. Murray Bowen was born in 1913 in Tennessee and died in 1990. He was a psychiatrist with a psychoanalytic background. As a way to treat and analyze schizophrenic patients at the Menninger Clinic, he started including their mothers. When Bowen later started working at the National Institute in Mental Health, he hospitalized entire families of schizophrenic patients. Bowen viewed the family as an emotional unit where individuals change within the context of the family system. Bowen defined anxiety as an emotional tension or stress which moves through the family system and prevents people from thinking and reasoning. The goals of therapy were to decrease anxiety and help individuals differentiate themselves while remaining connected to the family. 
he looked at patterns within three generations of a family in order to understand and challenge them. By doing so, issues would be effectively resolved. Bowen's eight interlocking concepts. Number one, differentiation of self. Differentiation of self is the ability to function autonomously while remaining connected to the relationship family system. Those with poor differentiation of self function, much like a codependent person, they may take on other people's problems as their own. They have difficulty making their own decisions and communicating directly. They usually agree with others to feel accepted and have no boundaries or sense of self. People with higher levels of differentiation can think and make logical and intentional decisions rather than react to their emotions. They have boundaries and can say no to that which is not beneficial to them. Two, triangles. Triangles are the smallest stable unit within a relationship. When there is stress between two people, it can be diminished by involving a third party where the tension can be transferred to. Three, nuclear family emotional system. This is four patterns of functioning within a single generation. Dysfunction in one spouse, marital conflict, impairments in a child or children, emotional distance. The current generation uses the past generations of, as an example of how to function. So if there is dysfunctional behavior, it will continue to be passed down to younger generations. Number four, family projection process has to do with the way a parent transfers their emotional problems to the next generation. Bowen's eight interlocking concepts continue. Number five, emotional cutoff. This is when people try to manage their poor differentiation of self or their issues through physically distancing themselves or emotionally withdrawing from the relationship. Number six, sibling position. Your sibling position could explain roles in relationships or character traits. For example, people who are an only child or are the oldest sibling may be very responsible people. People who are middle children may tend to be more flexible, and those who were the youngest sibling may be quite dependent on others. Number seven, multi-generational transmission process. Multi-generational transmission process is how roles and patterns are transferred to other generations. Children may become similar to their parents but differentiate slightly. This pattern repeats, so younger generations show a resemblance to the previous generation, but are a little different. Number eight, societal emotional process. Societal emotional process is the view that families and society shape one another. Both show signs of progression and regression in terms of functioning. Bowen's approach and application. In therapy, the counselor is like a consultant, providing information to the client who will then do the work required to alter the patterns of dysfunctional behavior and become an expert in functioning of their own family system. Bowen's approach is good for clients who are willing to explore what they have learned and experienced growing up. 
in order to identify negative patterns, behaviors, or beliefs and use that knowledge to implement different behaviors. But this approach would not work for clients who are not willing to explore their past. Sometimes people who have experienced trauma do not want to discuss it, and they can even block it out entirely from their memory. In addition, Bowen's approach would not be good if an intervention is time sensitive, as it could take time to discuss and analyze three generations of patterns. Another theorist is Virginia Satir, who developed the human validation process model. Satir was born in Wisconsin in 1916. The oldest of five children, she was curious and determined. By age three, she had taught herself to read, and by age five, she decided what she wanted to be in life. In Virginia's words, when I was five, I decided to become a children's detective on parents. There was so much that went on between my parents that made little or no sense to me. Making sense of things around me, feeling loved, and being competent were my paramount concerns. I did feel loved and felt I was competent, but making sense of all the contradictions, deletions, and distortions I observed both in my parents' relationship and among people outside in the world was heart-rendering and confusion-making to me. Sometimes this situation raised questions about my being loved but mostly it affected my ability to predict, to see clearly, and to develop my total being. Satir earned a teaching degree and started her career by becoming a teacher and later a principal. She returned to school for her master's in psychiatric work and started an independent practice in 1955. She worked at the Illinois State Psychiatric Institute, teaching family therapy and beginning to develop a theoretical approach of her own. Virginia Satir, Human Validation Process Model. The human validation process model is growth oriented, focused on the present, and helps people improve communication and self-esteem. Satir believed that, one, people possess the internal resources necessary for positive growth throughout their lives. Two, an individual's experiences and self-esteem determine how they act in relationships and communicate with others. Three, Self-esteem is an important factor in changing behavior and increasing self-esteem allows them to become increasingly congruent. Congruence is a healthy way to communicate that is direct, clear, and mindful of others. Four, techniques were secondary to relationships and Satir demonstrated warmth and compassion to help families work through their problems. She would build a connection, make observations, process information with clients, and teach clients how to perceive, respond, and act effectively in relationships. Number five, the experiences in therapy increase a person's awareness and creates a pathway for change. Number six, everyone is worthy of love and it is necessary to look beyond their behaviors, the iceberg metaphor. This is the personal iceberg metaphor of the Satir model, which just reminds people to look past the observed behaviors of a person because much more lies beneath like coping stances, feelings, feelings about feelings, perceptions, 
expectations, yearnings, and their true self. Satir Interventions and Techniques Some interventions and techniques include family mapping, constructing a genogram spanning three generations and including facts, experiences, and perceptions. Family sculpting. One person in the family arranges the others in the room, positioning them in a way that reflects their perception of a family's dynamics and relationships. Family members become living statues, and thought is given to distance, gestures, and posture. For example, a powerful person may be standing on a chair. A submissive person may be placed in a corner or sitting on the ground. Each family member takes turns presenting their perception of the family's dynamics. Family Reconstruction Using a three-generation family map and family sculpting, family members, typically 15 or more people, may represent a family role, resources, or feelings. It can help to see a family member beyond their position and as a real person. With the family dynamics on display, people can form a different view of themselves and their family, take responsibility for their choices in life, and find acceptance validation. Using I statements allows individuals to own their feelings and gives them the power to change their circumstances. Human Validation Process Model This model can work for people of all ethnicities and cultures and for diverse populations like LGBTQ. The Satir Human Validation Process Model emphasizes each person's and family's communication habits, self-esteem, and self-worth, as well as their inherent internal strengths. Each person is a system of positive and negative parts that can be utilized to help people recognize and integrate various aspects of their personalities. Why study family systems theories? As counselors, we work with high school children and their families, so interacting with families is part of our job. We are required to be culturally aware and sensitive some of our clients may come from a collective culture versus an individualistic one. According to the CRCC Code of Ethics, under the Respecting Diversity section, A.2A, it says, Respecting culture, rehabilitation counselors demonstrate respect for the cultural identity of clients in developing and implementing rehabilitation and treatment plans and providing and adapting interventions. According to the CRC's Codes of Ethics, under the Client's Rights section in A.3e, Support Network Involvement, rehabilitation counselors recognize that support by others may be important to clients. When appropriate and with consent from clients, rehabilitation counselors enlist the support and involvement of others. Example, religious, spiritual, community leaders, family members, friends, legal guardians. Minority groups were underrepresented in mental health care because they believed therapy was unsuitable for their needs or unrelated to their way of life. Many theories focused on independence and self, while in other cultures, individualism is valued less than family unity 
and respect for elders. Family therapy is an appropriate method of psychotherapy for these individuals because of the centrality of the family in these cultures. The movement of minority counseling began to focus on other minority groups such as gays, lesbians, women, and the aged, while some focused on ethnic differences. Training programs have been developed to enable counselors to learn about the multicultural difference. It is important for all therapists to develop cultural awareness. This encompasses not only being conscientious of other cultures, but also being aware of one's own cultural identity. Murray Bowen developed the concept of genograms as a component of his family systems model. Monica McGoldrick and Randy Gerson popularized the term even more with the release of their book, Genograms, Assessment and Intervention. While genograms can be used to map out family history and reveal psychiatric tendencies, they can also create a family tree representing many generations, educational levels, and career choices. From childhood, family systems shape an individual's behavior, attitude, belief system, cultural identity, and responsibilities and interactions in society. Genograms can be used as a vocational rehabilitation counselor's tool to map out generational patterns of a consumer's family. Genograms are great assessment tools, but like any other assessment, they are only as good as the accuracy of the information provided. Like conventional genograms, it should go back at least three generations. Going back too far for a vocational genogram tends to misconstrue the information because facts can get distorted. The symbols used are essential and denote gender and the various lines to designate relationships. Multiple styles of lines can depict familial relationships and emotional relationships. When a consumer is unsure, appears to be on the verge of frustration, or is wary of the thought of changing jobs, career genograms might be helpful in the counseling process. Other questions can be asked after conducting a genogram that might help the consumer open up. Some consumers have grown up thinking only specific careers were suitable for them family myths that held them back, dreams they gave up on, or an education that did not lead to employment in that degrees field. Exploring a genogram with a consumer will help them process new information about the occupational options and enable them to use their decision-making skills to create a plan. Designing a vocational genogram can be simple and should be approached from a rough draft mind frame, which is why using pencil or chalk are ideal for sketching out the pattern. A landscape layout is perfect. Generations are in descending order from oldest to most recent using the gender symbols. Write each person's name below the emblem and write the person's highest grade level and profession. Use the lines to designate the connections from person to person. Include other information that might be relevant. Thank you for watching our presentation. Please feel free to take our short knowledge quiz via the SurveyMonkey link below.